y'all it's megan welcome back to the channel glad y'all are here today um come spend the evening with us of course um it's no telling what we might be doing around here and right now we're fixing to dig up this here cherry tree it is officially we've decided that it's dead ain't yeah. we yeah it's gone it got killed last year when we hit that drought and I guess it was kind of our fault we didn't keep it watered, but... No, I thought it'd been in the ground long enough that it should have... Been all right. Yeah, been all right, but evidently it had. Or something else could have killed it, but I'm pretty sure the drought got it. And we've got another little cherry tree right there, and it survived fine, so... Don't know exactly what happened to this this one. Look, there's another one. She might have been what killed it. Did you dig up the tree and kill it? So you tell me, I was thinking, you know, where this one's up close to the house, we talked about putting the peach tree because it would be pretty blooms, but that's, that plum tree will have pretty blooms on it too. Yeah. You want to try it up here? Yeah, we can. Or would you rather have the peach tree up here because maybe with it up here on top of the hill, it may be a less chance of it getting frosted. Well, that's true too. Let's do that. Let's do that? Yeah. So we'll put the peach tree up here? Yeah. Okay. We had a tree here one time, but... I think we had one one time that a dog killed or something, didn't it? It was something. I can't remember. Something? I don't know. Something happened to it. So we turned it into a flower, like just nothing but a flower bed. Then the yarrow took it over, which the yarrow... That was our fault. The yarrow won't bother this tree. So... There's nothing that'll make natural mulch around it. There you go. So we won't worry about the yarrow now. It can, it can take over this spot if it wants. Compost. I think that'll be real pretty up here. Yeah, I believe it'll be a pretty place for it too. Pee! Edible landscape is something, I mean, we ain't talked about this year, but that's kind of a goal we've been working towards, what, the last two or three years? Yeah, it's taking out stuff that shows no purpose. Besides my pretty tree over there. Yeah, and, put, and replacing it with stuff that's still pretty, yet edible and produces something so i don't guess it necessarily has to be edible but as long as it gives us something we can use is what we've been trying to do around here our little orchard we have here with the peach trees that's a pear tree over there and the rest of these are apple trees so what do you got there andy this is that Santa Rosa plum. so we're gonna plant us a plum tree down here to just kind of keep the variety up yeah, and I think you can officially call this place full after we get this one planted. Yeah. But I was thinking with those blueberries, if we run out of room over there, I know I want to plant a few more over there, but I was thinking we might plant, I don't know, either across this top row or down through there with the other blueberries. Okay. On the outside perimeter. Okay. And then there's you Good grief. This ain't nothing but clay down here. Should I have that? I have y'all dig that other thing. Hmm? Huh? That's all dirt up there. This is most of our dirt around here, so when it comes gardening time and you see the dark dirt that's in our garden, Andy worked hard for years. To, to, get that. to get it like that. That's right. I believe you hit a rock. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take this hole very big. I might have to come out of a coat. Straight. Push it a little towards daddy. Now 
And this plum, some of them we oh, have good. learned um, have to have a pollinator tree, but this particular plum said it was self-pollinating, right? Yep. I'm That's why. We, yeah. So we're gonna see how it goes. You know, we had a plum tree when I was home growing up, and we ended up cutting the thing down because it never had no plums. And I bet that's why it never had no plums. I bet so. Because it had to, it's supposed to have a pollinator. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to come back and make our mulch tree. Right. Right. If we did decide to add a raised bed, I believe we've got one more, you know, enough room for one more bed right there. If we ever Added decide to, to do it. If we ever decide to do that. Okay. See this? We'll take this breath of pear down. It don't need to be there. And I believe this one right here is going to pretty much do us in for the fruit trees, ain't it? I think we say that every year. Well, we really, <laughs> we're really going to have to stop after this. My goodness, look at how the chickweed has come out since this hot spill. See, yeah. all our, our greens are bolting, so that makes them bitter and been feeding them to critters, so. They sure are pretty, though. Yeah, they are. Hey, Jacob, go get me a tape measure real that quick. I want to make sure I leave enough yep. room for another bed. So we're going to line this one up. Now, what is that? Is that an apple tree? Yeah, this is the uh, golden delicious apple. And I was pretty upset because y'all look back from videos from last summer. We had a golden delicious right there, and the blight got it. At least we think it was a fire blight that got it. And it was doing so good. I mean, it was a beautiful tree. And just, that was like the first apple tree we ever planted, wasn't it? Or something like that. It was, I think. It was like the oldest one we had. Yeah. And, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm assuming the fire blight got it. I think that we never really know for sure, but just from comments on the video where we showed that tree, that's what a lot of people said it was. And, uh, anyways. I was really upset to lose that tree because the Golden Delicious is one of my favorites. So, we got some milk. I bet you've hit a rock. Yep. We got some more hard pack clay right here too. Look at this. When we cleared all this land right here, so right where we're standing, when we first bought this place, it was woods. It was woods plumb up to the road right there. When it was cleared off, you know, it was just nothing but bare red clay everywhere. Look at this. That's how much topsoil we've built on this little area right here since we've been here. That's pretty cool. That is cool. You know how I've done that? Yeah. It's probably thicker in this spot than it is anywhere else because for years before our raised beds were here, all of those trees that are right there behind you, we would take and blow all the leaves over here and mulch them up on top of this grass spot right here. Because I was trying to build topsoil on this because we had cut it down, plumbed to the red clay, and uh, evidently it worked. So. But I, I would have mounds of leaves up here this deep all the way across this stretch and we just mulch them in and mulch them down to nothing. Y'all boys down south with all that black sand stuff, you probably wouldn't know what to do with this right here. <laughs> Speaking to you, Stumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. It's like a rock, ain't it? Yeah, look at that. But it's not a bad thing. I mean, that stuff right there holds moisture. Cause it don't matter in, even in the worst of droughts. You can dig down a few inches a lot of times and you're gonna find moisture. Uh oh. Good lord. Boy, that can come apart, didn't it? Yeah, that hadn't been rooted in good. Well, all these are is bare root trees, and they get them in and pot them up. Oh, okay. So it's only been potted up since probably last fall. 
it hadn't had time to, I guess, to really do the root ball out. I always like when I'm planting a tree or a shrub or something, if I have enough extra dirt at the end to build somewhat of a little berm like that right there on the on the downhill side, that way as water's coming down, it'll stop right there and sink in around the roots. Then we'll take this sod and sort of bust it up, lay it upside down with intentions of killing the sod that's the reason i do that sort of lay that like that and then we'll come back we might not make it that far today but we're going to come back and we'll fix our mulch greens and everything around these two trees so for those of you that might be newer to the channel this right here we call it we pick and call it berry hill but um we got a bunch of blueberry plants and we're going to add a few more this right here was real steep. Well, I mean, it's still steep. That's why we've got these um, to help with the washing. But it was pretty much an unusable hillside. It was rocky and all that. You can see in the pig lot here how rocky that is. That's the way it was here. We put the pigs out on it. They tilled it, didn't they? Yeah, boy. They, I mean, they straight up tilled it. We planted a cover crop. Let them back in on the cover crop again. And, well, we made us a usable spot, didn't we? Yep, we got Barry Hill now. <laughs> hey, look at our strawberries that we planted. So, we was pretty worried about these, thinking they may not make it through the winter because we planted them fairly late. They're, they're just now starting to really grow. So, maybe one of these days, not only is it going to be covered in blueberries, it's going to be covered in strawberries, mm -hmm. too. And we've also got some raspberries and blackberries and muscadines right up there that you saw Andy pruning not too long ago. Yep. So, y'all, lots of people who move to our area of North Carolina, and they, I, I see it on Facebook all the time, people talking about the red clay. How do you get, you know, what do you do with it? How do you grow anything in it? Well, honestly, red clay is not a bad thing. Right there is a good old chunk of it that was down the very bottom of this hole. But what I do want to show you is this whole hillside, once again, when it was cleared off, was just straight up red clay. When the pigs were on this, this hillside was red because of the clay. But look at the dirt, the soil that we've built right here by just simply keeping this mulched. We mulched it twice, two years in a row now. Well, mm -hmm. this will be the first year we haven't mulched it. And uh, y'all, just look at that. Like, that was wood chips that came from like a tree service company and we put them thick on here like i mean thick and the first year they kind of went away pretty fast we mulched it again the second year and the second mulching we've still got wood chips laying out here but you know that's just something i wanted to throw in there because really i didn't even realize how much this had changed until i started digging in it just now so like i said i mean it used to be just nothing but red clay and once again, I'm not talking bad about red clay because if you know how to work it, red clay will grow just anything you want for the most part. But, um, you know, if you're wanting to build some better soil and whatnot, I mean, like I said, we just simply mulch this. And it's the mulch breaking down over the past couple years has built a really nice layer of what looks like good fertile soil here. I think I'm gonna take another one on out here. Right here on the edge. That'll work. <laughs> it's a bright wheel. Okay, we'll get us a couple more. It's gonna be fun to remolk when we do it. With all this stuff in here. Yeah. Can we get a couple more? Yeah. So I just want to show y'all our goal. Um, you know, we just showed you the little strawberries down through where the blueberries are. But right here, strawberry spread. And we want like some natural, some natural mulch, natural ground cover to help of course with the weed pressure and to hold the ground together and all that good stuff and hopefully eventually we won't really have to put any mulch out here that's the final goal whether that'll happen or not who knows 
but it's done real good right here and i know when i've talked about this before people say oh you can't go grow blueberries and strawberries in the same place because of the ph and so on and so forth well they're doing all right out here both of them are you know we ain't after a huge crop of the most perfect strawberries you've ever seen or the most perfect blueberries, or the most perfect blueberries you know so as long as we get some off of each of them here and there we'll be happy won't we so that's why we like to have a lot of everything you know just like we got a lot of strawberries we've got a fair amount of blackberries a lot of blueberries a lot of apple trees in hopes that if well one don't produce maybe at that, least something will yeah maybe that out of will. all <laughs> of them we have maybe something will produce and uh you know so and all of our fruit trees and all of this right here is what i would call at its adolescent stage like it's not mature by no means yet so in in just a few more years when everything really does start to ramp up i can't wait to see what all we start getting that's everything got to be planted uh we're gonna plant that cabbage oh golly i done forgot about that yeah i guess we can go up here and plant that cabbage real quick and i did want to tell y'all y'all saw andy mention puckett's greenhouse the other day all these blueberry plants they also came from uh that greenhouse we really enjoy and all the fruit trees that we and all today. the fruit trees right and we really enjoy working with them as some good folks up there and we've been buying from them for several years now and i mean they got quality plants i think this is gonna be tomatoes right i think that would probably be best because yep, this so, is shady because, and we're not planting near as many tomatoes this year as we did last year at least that's the plan for that's right plan. now however we've got a lot of tomato seeds to start so i would about imagine and i'm over here saying andy how can we save these little tiny seedlings coming up yeah from the frog <laughs> so i'm sure there's going to be more tomatoes planted than planned but um for now, the plan for now the plan is that bed down through there i think it's going to be tomatoes it gets the most sun out of the little beds and then so. this bed over here is not exactly shady but it is shadier than the rest of it so we're going to plant our cabbage in this and cabbage tends to tolerate shade better than other vegetables well of course like i say you know halfway through the day on especially with our tree gone now this will be full of sun my That's little peas are looking good they are they now, are. This is early flat Dutch cabbage, and this is the same variety that we plant all the time. I can't never remember the name of it though until I actually see it on a tag. What do you think, Megan? Feels good to have our first plants in the ground, don't it? Yes, it does. It's, it's so gonna, pretty. It's gonna be so pretty. We're using this spot that we've never been able to use before. Yep, and they may look a little crowded, and I'm sure they probably are. That's something we fail at every year if we plant our cabbage just a little bit too thick. Well, it'd be all right. Can't never you never can judge just how like they're behind the rest of them i mean we'll pull them out yeah feed them to the chickens or something i hope they do good though but well i feel like my peas look pretty good in this dirt so i think they'll be all right yeah i think the peas look really good i think i'm gonna let them peas get a little bit bigger and we'll come back out here with some straw or some hay or something and, and mulch this now i got the fever <laughs> all right i think we're gonna go plant some broccoli now and one of our raised beds and that's probably going to be all of the planting for now well we've come out here to the raised bed to plant uh the broccoli the broccoli did tremendously well uh last spring out here so that's why we're going to do it again this year but we have these beds up here that are already empty and me and andy were just standing here talking about it and by the time it's time to plant green beans to run up our trellises that broccoli is going to possibly be shading it out because um, it'll be phasing out but it probably won't be 
ready to pull up yet. We'll see. But we decided just to go ahead and pull up the greens you saw a while ago. They're bolting anyway. And we'll feed them to the critters. And we'll just go ahead and plant our broccoli here. Yep, the chickens are gonna be happy over there. Oh yeah. Good job. So for now, we just kind of keep what mulch layers here, here. Okay. And we'll just spread them apart. So this is what kind of broccoli we plant every year. Emerald crown. Now we started some broccoli from seed back in the fall and again we don't have good luck with the brassicas it never it didn't make anything starting with seed our own um, we did that back in the fall and didn't have good luck with them but now these emerald crown that we plant from the greenhouse we've been telling y'all about this is what they carry every year and it does great for us so yep and that's another good thing about local greenhouses you know if you don't know what kind of varieties and stuff do well for you most of the time they're only going to have what does well in your area sometimes we tend to overcrowd our plants but y'all it shades the crown out so good that once they start filling out you don't have to worry about weeds and such Thing. I'd like to see your long legs ride that little thing. <laughs> Been a few years since you could ride that. Well, we got still got them strawberries. We got strawberries we need to plant too, but I think we've got one other thing we need to go get taken care of before we plant anything else. Yeah. That needs to be on the high priority list. So That's we've right. come down to um, the area where we mow hay. Now this isn't our land. We don't own this land, but it is family land. And they let us um, mow and keep the hay off of it as long as we keep the place up. The folks, they don't live around here anymore. So that's what we're doing right now. We're down here. We had a little bit of a flood here a month or two ago and it's washed a lot of stuff up in the hay field well it's time for the grass to start growing so we've come down here and got to get this cleaned off cleaned out so i'm gonna pick up some of these stuff and throw it in the edge of the woods and that's what andy's over there working on but when we come over here especially this time of year before the snakes and such start getting out we like to take a little hike up through the woods and i can't wait to show you all that I'm going to show you right here what mainly we've got washed out in the field is a bunch of sticks like that right there so the water got way up in here in this bottom and so what I'm going to try to do is I'm pushing everything into piles with the scrape blade then I'll take the grapple and pick it up but it's all the way out through here like over here beside me everywhere there's I wish, I really wish I could have been over here when this flooded like this. I'd have liked to have seen it. We're just trying to get it up before the uh, grass really starts growing, which it's already started. So this should have been done probably a month ago, but man, spring is creeping up on us fast.
the work's done here and as you can see behind me this is an old home site we're not sure of the year of this house I, andy's mama and his grandpa used to farm tobacco over here and she barely remembers somebody living here when she was a kid but don't remember who they were or anything like that um but if you want to see that video me and andy did a detailed walk around a year or two ago of this place i'll be sure to link that and there's a cool little hidden treasure back up in here that like i said we like to walk to when we're over here this time of year i just hope them back there's a blooming up in there i hope so well, they're see. not even blooming though we're in the woods those are some of like our native orchids. I may be wrong. We looked it up last year, but I can't remember. But they're everywhere right, right here. Look. Like, you can tell that that leaf has just come out. It's so tender. It's so tender feeling. Yeah. Pond. That's the back side of the dam. The dam busted years ago, you can see there. So it's not a pond anymore. But it's a wet spot. <laughs> see that? Right there used to be the old pond. What that used to be? A pond. Ooh. So pretty through here because there's random daffodils just everywhere right there you can see some up here what are you doing on that side It's amazing how up and down this creek there's clusters of daffodils everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. But there's some more. And there's more up at the top. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere up and down through here. Now look at my knee-high baller I found. That was laying down on the ground back there. No telling how old that is. Yep. But I was just wondering, like, wonder if it washed up? Because we're right on this creek, so it could have washed from, somewhere. you know, up here somewhere. But also, it makes you wonder if somebody sat there and drunk a knee-high one day and laid it down. You know, that would have been, what, 70s probably? 60, 70s? Yes. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised that as much rain as we've had, it's not flowing more than that. I know. I feel like it's usually a little more than I that. I feel like it's more, too. Yeah. I think I walked it one day. The spring is actually on somebody else's property, but I walked up the creek one day, and way on up there, there's a spring coming out of the ground. And I mean, it's probably the around here, anyways. That's the most gushing spring that I've ever seen. This way on up there, though. So this is the top side of it. It's just as pretty up here as it is, and there's more daffodils yeah, right way up. up there. Yeah, they're literally all up and down this creek. It's crazy. Yay! Watch. Go, go get it. Tiger's in her element right now. She loves this stuff. so nice up in here like when you're in here all the way up in here the whole walk you can't hear anything you don't hear no road noise you don't hear no you know you're not around houses you're not around anything you don't hear nothing um and in our part of the woods that's getting a little scarce nowadays there's been so many 
new houses and stuff built. Um, it's getting hard to find those places where you don't hear anything anymore. But there's still a few that exist. Look up through here. See right there, another daffodil. But they line this creek all the way through. So the mountain and the mountain curve is coming out right now. <laughs> So a lot of people ask or have been asking lately what kind of dog tiger is and the best we can figure out she's a mountain cur dog um she was give to us but um so we really don't know but that's the that's the best that we know and she where'd she go yeah she blends in there she is she blends in wonderfully but she is so agile like she can run through this brush and stuff like it's nothing. It's pretty it's pretty fun just to watch her run through the woods. What you doing, Jacob? We're throwing, rocks. throwing rocks. If you throw them far, it's too close. The rock will pull you off. Oh, that one busted a little bit. Mm -hmm. Throwing rocks. Hey! Watch this one. If it hits a rock, it'll butt. Nope, not that one. Watch it, Daddy. I see. Now we're heading back out. I stumbled upon this. The blood root's already coming out. That's the first one I've seen. What is it? Blood root. Huh? It's a type of herb. You can use it for all types of things. Mm -hmm. Usually this whole hillside right here. Oh, y'all see my pretty flower bouquet? But um, usually this old hillside here is covered in blood root. It's all up and down this. Why is it called blood root? Well, when you dig that up right there, the root, well, uh, when you break the root, it actually looks like it's bleeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to break that root. No, we ain't going to dig it up. We don't want to, we don't want to mess with it unless we need it. Well, we're back now and uh, Megan's inside. She's working on supper and I think I'm going to get these strawberries planted while I still got some daylight left this season. Uh, then I guess it'll be about time to go in and call it a day. We've got, I think there's 18 in each tray. So what, 36, 36 strawberry plants we need to plant. And I'm going to stick them all out here on the, on the Berry Hill. <laughs> so uh, anyways, we'll get these in the ground and then be done with it. Well, all 36 strawberries are planted now. Can't hardly tell it, but I added a bunch through here and right in there, and then right across this whole area right here. I added some, and then I added a few right out there at the very end. All right, that's all taken care of. Um, everything watered in out here. I'll have to go run around and I guess water in all those trees we planted this morning. But um, everything out here on the hillside is looking good. We just need to get some mulch in some areas. I need to come out here and put some compost around the blueberries we just planted. And then I need to get some mulch in some of these thin spots here. Because we've got a fairly thin spot right there. So... If that don't hurry up and get some mulch on it, the weeds will be going crazy on that. As long as they don't get killed here, we've got some cold weather coming up this coming week. And everything out here is blooming, except for the blackberries. They're smart, I guess. But the blueberries are all in bloom. So, I don't know. I guess time will tell. So, let's go up here to the house and eat us some supper. I'm about to starve. 
for supper tonight. But this is my canned pork. I can oh, uh, yeah. pork every every year, every season when we do our hog killing. And this is one of my favorite ways to use it is for taco meat. It looks delicious. So got, what do you got? Peppers in there? Yeah. And that's my frozen uh, chopped peppers from last year, and just some salt and pepper, and. So that's my favorite way to use that canned pork. I know I have people ask me like, how do you use your canned meat? Well, this is one of my favorite ways for the canned pork anyway. So we're having Megan's kind of tacos. I know they're not authentic or anything like that, but. <laughs> no, but they're still good. But anyways, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video today. Hope you learned a little something. Be sure to say hello down in the comments. We love to hear from you. And anyways, till we see y'all in the next one. Y'all have a good one. Have a good one.